Hey everyone, welcome to a new video. Today's video is going to be all about my beauty raves and faves. A couple of weeks ago, I recorded a video called My Beauty Pet Peeves, where I went on a bit of a rant about things I don't like about beauty, the beauty industry, the beauty community. However, of course, there's also going to be a positive side to that community and the beauty industry. And that's why I have a list of 10 things here of things that I actually love about the YouTube beauty community and things that are happening in the beauty industry that I think are really giving people new inspiration and that are just great to have. Um, the first one, creativity. I think that makeup is a really fun way to be creative. And I mean, even though I'm not really into the Instagram look, there are still a couple of people that I like to follow on there just because they are so creative and using colors or using glitters or they're doing looks and creations that I would never ever dream of doing. And I think that that's a great way to actually use makeup and to be creative at the same time. So I think that creativity and makeup definitely go together very well. And I have to give props to a lot of the techniques and other things that have been coming out in recent years, even though they aren't necessarily for me, I think it helps people to explore and push those boundaries. And I really appreciate that. And that brings me actually to my next point. Point number two is that the beauty community has really helped me to explore my preferences. Um, so what I like to do in makeup, um, so I'm not talking about like product recommendations uh, as much as how I can do makeup that looks nice on me. At least I think my makeup looks nice and most of my colleagues and students also tell me that my makeup looks nice. So I think that that is definitely something that I've learned through watching YouTube videos. OG YouTube, think of Wayne Goss, who's still around, of course. Some Lisa Eldridge, Pixie Woo, like I would copy all of the techniques that I saw in all of these videos. And in the end, I really found out a way in which I can do makeup that works for me. So exploring your preferences, knowing what looks nice on you. I think that that is something that the beauty community on YouTube definitely played a role in for me at least. And I think it continues to do so for many people. Something that I also really like about the YouTube beauty community. Um, my third point on this list is the use of colors. I think especially Mariah Leonard, I think her name is. And there's a Swedish lady that I started watching called Angela uh, Newfist. I hope I pronounced her name uh, correctly. I will link anyone I mentioned down below. Um, and I just really like how they use color and it's so inspirational. They are the reason why I wanna start wearing a little bit more color on my eyelids. Today I've dipped my toe into a little bit of green. So uh, we're getting there. We're easing our way into it. The crazy colors have yet to come. Um, but especially Mariah Leonard is really, really great at doing these monochrome looks of like an ochre yellow eye with like a lip that matches it. It's so, so stunning. And uh, I just really think that that's a great way of showing how you can also do makeup rather than doing the standard thing. And I really appreciate channels that focus on that as well. What I've also learned through YouTube, <laughs> or bloggers in general actually, is that drugstore products can be just as great. I've mentioned this before, I believe, where I used to really think that only high-end stuff would actually work. That was like why I never really got into makeup, because it was so expensive. Uh, and true be told, makeup over here is a lot more expensive than it is in the US or the UK, for instance. But still, I have found out that you can use a three euro mascara and get a very, very great result. In fact, I'm wearing an Essence mascara today and I have to say that I quite like it. Um, so yeah, drugstore can be just as great and that is definitely something that I learned through YouTube and I continue to find great drugstore products because people recommend them in their videos. And I think that that is a great addition that it's not just about, you know, splurging on a very, a very high-end foundation, but that you can also find something that works just as well for a lot cheaper. So the fifth point of my list isn't necessarily something that I still do. Uh, definitely back in the day when I didn't know that much about makeup yet, when I was like starting to figure things out because I was a late bloomer when it came to makeup. I didn't really like it very much. As I already mentioned, I thought it was expensive and I didn't want to spend that kind of money on it. So um, I didn't really get into makeup un until I started working. And that was also around the same time that YouTube was around. So I think that 
in terms of me doing makeup, YouTube may have actually played a, quite a significant role there too. But it was just back in the day, it was all about, you know, learning something new. I remember where, uh, watching a Michelle Fawn, uh, was that her name? I think it was, who did this like sunset eye tutorial and I tried copying it. And like, that's how I learned to do makeup. And I think that that's something that YouTube is just great at. <laughs> now, this next point, you're probably going to think I'm very silly here, um, but back in the day, there was no such thing as an eyeshadow primer, or, or at least if it existed, I didn't know it existed. So I went the first couple of years of my makeup wearing days with eyeshadow that creased like crazy. And then I discovered through bloggers and YouTubers that eyeshadow primer is a thing and it can help you make your eyeshadow stick. And I have a look back since. So point number seven on this list is reviews. Now I don't really like watching review videos. I've mentioned that before as well. Uh, I just really prefer if I need to need to have a quick look at a product. I just prefer looking up pictures online. I don't want to watch a 15 minute video about one product. However, that being said, there are a couple of YouTubers that I definitely like because of the reviews that they do. Tati is one of the very few really big YouTubers that I like. And the reasons why I, why I like her channel is because she does all these reviews that come across very honest. I think that two other channels that do that as well are Jessica Braun and Emily Noel as well. They are just super honest about whether they do or do not like the product. I have tried some of the products that they love and I don't always agree with them, but that just goes to show makeup is such a suggest subjective thing, suggestive, no, subjective thing. So it doesn't really go for everybody and everybody will have different experiences, but it's great sometimes to get a take on different products. Another thing that I love about the beauty community, whether it's bloggers or uh, YouTube, is the fact that it is a community. I have found myself a couple of places where I can now like talk to people who are also beauty enthusiasts. And that's one of the reasons why I started doing this, because there was nobody around in my area that I knew also liked makeup. So it's just been a great way for me to find people who are like-minded. And I think that that's one of the powers of the internet to begin with. And uh, so the fact that it is a community to start with, even though it has its downsides, um, I think that that's a great thing. Point number nine on this list uh, is the fact that through YouTube, especially YouTube, indie brands have gotten on my radar a lot more. Um, they are still very difficult for me to get. I have to pay a lot of custom fees usually to buy brands that are a little bit more of the off the beaten path. Uh, and that's, then I'm always a bit like, uh, will it be worth it? But I think that it's great that I at least know of the existence of Melt Makeup and Storybook Cosmetics and like Davina and Look See Beauty and, uh, what's it? Sydney Grace. I just love how it's also a way of giving people a platform who may not be sold in Sephora and that you can also go out and buy things that are maybe made in a slightly different way. And then my final point, and this is definitely a point that I wanted to put on this list to sort of balance out the two videos that I've now done. And the last point is it's only makeup. So even though some people, there's just so much drama sometimes, it, at the end of the day, it's only makeup. You can wash it off, you can go to bed, and you can start over in the morning. So whatever it is you do, and I think that that's one of the things that I also really like about makeup, is that, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect. And you can fix a mistake, and if there is a mistake, who cares? I mean, you can just, there's better luck next time, yeah? So I think that that's a great thing as well, that I've, I think, I already kind of knew it, but I think that YouTube and the beauty community have definitely contributed to the fact that, hey, it's only makeup, so who cares? So those were 10 points that I think are great about the beauty community slash industry. I think we definitely need to give them a little bit more uh, credit for what they are also doing for us and not just random rave about the things they're doing wrong because there are also tons of things that I think we can take away from this community. That's ultimately why we are all here. Uh, so yeah, if you would like to share with me why you are part of the beauty community, then I'm very curious to know. So leave a comment down below and yeah, like this video if you did and subscribe because I make new videos every single Thursday and Sunday. I hope to see you in my next video. Bye.